Gospel according to St. John. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As scripture says, living rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit, that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today we celebrate Pentecost, and in that we see the first fruits start to take place in the Acts of the Apostles and many of the things the Apostles did after the resurrection of Jesus and especially after the Ascension. They gathered together in Seneca with Our Lady and what happened next was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon them in power where new languages came from their mouth, healings would happen, they would put lame and blind and deaf people in the very shadow of the apostles where they would walk and they would be healed. The same grace that was in Jesus, the power to heal the divine lights, the divine waters, the living waters that Jesus had were now in his twelve. And they went throughout the world, they went throughout countries to proclaim the gospel without any fear, with great courage, and they claimed it in the face of great darkness. Then and now are not so different in our world. We see great darkness in our world today where everybody is fighting, accusing one another, this, that, and the other thing. Hard times are upon us. And it's a struggle. And even the hopelessness that people are having in their hearts, even the struggle that they're having in their hearts, is not because of God, it's because of demonic influence. Influence away from God. Saying that you don't have to believe in this, you don't have to believe in that, you don't have to believe in this. And we spend our time in this world satisfying ourselves and our need for knowledge. But do we ever satisfy that need for knowledge of who God is? The Holy Spirit is an attribute, it's an after effect of relationship with God. Remember that Jesus, the Son of God, had a relationship with the Father. It is described in Holy Theology that the Holy Spirit was spirated, not created. What's that mean? It's the love, it's the relationship between Father and Son back and forth, loving one another, which spirates this new person of the Holy Trinity. And then it comes forth in the world and affects our hearts and our minds. And this what was, is what was given to the apostles because upon Pentecost, they, in a sense, went through their ordination. I was talking to a seminarian the other day doing some formation over at Spiritus. And I told him, I said, look, your relationship is not going to be with Jesus so much as it's going to be with the Father. And you have to start praying to the Father more and more as a seminarian. And he couldn't understand. He goes, I don't understand that. I said, you will be standing in Persani Christi, in the person of Christ. You'll be praying directly to the Father. This is the relationship of priesthood, and then out forth from that is the grace of the Holy Spirit. So it's this relationship between Father and Son that brings that relationship of the Holy Spirit to the people. And then he started to weep. He goes, I've never heard that before. I said, I've never heard it before either. It just came out of my mouth. It must be the Holy Spirit, right? 
So the point is, is how does this affect us? How does it affect the everyday Catholic, the people in the pew? Well, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is about relationship with God. The apostles didn't pray for the Holy Spirit. They didn't know what it was. They had a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus revealed the Father in that relationship. And it's about us honing in on that relationship, loving God more, praising Him more, thanking Him more. And in that relationship, God gives back His Spirit. And then that Spirit renews us. And it's our courage, our love that the Spirit gives that we go out and we give that grace to others. It helps us pray. It helps us utter truth. It shows us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of perfect truth, especially when it comes to Scripture, when it comes even to science. I remember when I was studying in, in school, I would often pray to the Holy Spirit for understanding because I would read something and go, what the heck does that mean? And then I would start praying to the Holy Spirit. Within minutes, I would go, oh, I understand. But it's this grace that is the fuel of the engine of the church. This relationship with the Father through the Son, His priest, in Persona Christi, that gives forth the Eucharist, gives forth the sacraments to you. The Holy Spirit is so active in your life today because if you're sacramental people, you receive that Spirit every time you come to Mass. Now it's time to deepen that relationship. The easiest way to access the Spirit is through Our Lady. It's her heart. She was the spouse. The power of the Most High overshadowed her. And the incarnation of Christ in And that Spirit never left her. She prayed with the Apostles. She was there during Pentecost as well. But that spirit of love as a mother never left Mary. She was the first seminary, the first Ark of the Covenant. She changed Jesus' diapers. Yes, Jesus had diapers. Right? But the thing is, is all of this, right, we understand that when we access Mary's heart, when we come to her and say, give me your spouse, intercede for me, ask your spouse to bless us, to deepen my courage, my faith, my trust, my fear of the Lord, those gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit that we need in this world, it becomes a very powerful, easy way to go through Mary's heart. And we can go directly. We can receive Jesus and ask for that same Spirit. We can go to the Father and pray our fathers and ask for the Holy Spirit. These are all ways that we can ask but I end on this note. Father Gobi, who was a priest who's passed, who had visions of Our Lady, wrote a book called To My Beloved Priest. And he created the Marian Movement of Priests. And he created the Seneca, the Marian Movement Seneca. And what it is, is it's people gathered together, praying the rosary, receiving in mass, reading the messages of Our Lady. And in that, he said that Our Lady gave him a vision and also a locution. And John Paul was a great person that supported him in this, John Paul II. And he said, in our times, in the last days, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will manifest through the church even greater than in the times of the apostles. That you will see things that are so far beyond the scope of things that God will reveal himself in new ways to the people who believe. And they will receive the fruits of the Spirit in abundance so that in the time of darkness they will bring light and they will be a light in the darkness. So the question is, is are you that light? Are you willing to give your heart to the Spirit? Are you willing to ask for that grace? Because it is a game changer. It does change your life, but it changes the life of everyone around you. Your community, your family, your friends, your spouses, your children, your grandchildren. And throughout that, those relationships affects them in a positive, brings them joy, peace, love. Boy, do we need that at this time. 
So my brothers and sisters, do not be afraid, but have courage. Don't be afraid to ask for the Spirit of God, especially in the reception of communion, through the rosary, and through when you pray to the Father in heaven. Ask for His Holy Spirit. And don't be surprised when you receive something or a mind, a thought comes into your mind that inspires you to say something or we're pushed in a way to act where we wouldn't normally act. And in that, not in a bad way, but in a positive way with courage and strength and love. Because that's how the Spirit works. Let us stand.